This pandemic has put so many things on hold, and the evidence of these unusual times shows up in one very clear way for many people, in their photos, or lack of photos, maybe. With us to explain, let's welcome, in Edmonton, Alberta, photographer Dallas Curo. In Montreal, Quebec, journalist Marissa Colton. And in Vaughan, Ontario, photographer Jenny J. Great to have you three with us here on TVO tonight. I want to start by just sharing the results of a survey that McPaw did on users of a photo managing app to compare their photography habits before and then since the pandemic hit. And here we go. People who take photos every day, there's been a 23% decrease. How about people who look at older photos every day? A 38% increase. And how about people who are never taking videos anymore? That is an 80% increase. Let's dive in. Jenny, to you first. Has there been a change in the ways that you capture memories through photography pre-pandemic compared to post-pandemic? Absolutely. First and foremost, um, especially since I am a professional photographer, there used to be so many more opportunities to take photos of my family and my friends and my loved ones with my camera. Um, I definitely find that because I'm at home uh, more often and for so long, especially with all of the different lockdowns, um, I'm taking so many more photos on my phone than I actually was with my professional gear. Um, and on top of that, I, as an individual, I'm definitely taking less um, because I'm not necessarily getting up and getting dressed and going out and doing all the same things that we were pre-pandemic. Um, so there's a little bit of like less motivation to want to take those photos of yourselves and more of an effort. Marissa, how about you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, pre-pandemic, I was I, I was always taking photos of, you know, um, uh, myself, my friends, um, you know, uh, I was studying abroad at the time, uh, so there was a lot that I wanted to capture, a lot that I wanted to remember. Um, and when the pandemic hit, I just didn't, I just didn't have the same drive to to capture photos and to capture memories because it wasn't exactly uh, something I wanted to remember. Um, but you know, as the pandemic continued on, um, you know, I realized it was going to be much longer than uh, I initially thought, and I, you know. I noticed that there was the absence of photos in, in my photo library. And then I said to myself, you know, maybe I should continue to capture photos. Maybe it'll, maybe it's important to, to document this moment, um, you know, and continue to continue to make memories, uh, even in spite of the pandemic. Dallas, have things changed for you? Yes, uh, most certainly. I would say the starkest contrast I noticed on a personal level uh, because I actually had my second child during the first week of the pandemic. Um, so the way that I documented her arrival at home and the her social life um, in her earliest days was very different. I found I actually had to manufacture experiences and outings, most of which were just going outside to the park, um, so that she would have memories and feel that I did document her newborn days. Uh, whereas my son, who was born in 2017, you know, he was out socializing and meeting people right away. So we have all those documents. So I find um, on a personal level, I definitely am like almost manufacturing these experiences and making a conscious effort, as Jenny said, to um, to really force myself <laughs> to take more photos from my own life. And uh, for my clientele, it certainly changed as well. So that that child of yours, I presume, is coming up to her second birthday very shortly. That's right, March twenty fourth. March twenty fourth, and the the pictures, I guess, from the first couple of years of her life, are completely different from the pictures from the first couple of years of your son's life. I'm guessing, is that right? Entirely. Um, my son is in pictures of him being held by family and friends, for example, and. Um, doing indoor activities and my daughter it's all just us at home or family walks or being in the park at a distance from friends so i think there's a visual document of the stark differences in the early days for sure and let me do one more follow-up with you because you mentioned uh, having to deal with your clients what have you observed from working with your clients about how things are different post-pandemic versus pre-pandemic well first of all i made the decision to step away from photographing weddings um, because quite early on, I just thought, okay, I'm not booking anymore because this will be a logistical nightmare for probably 
a couple of years to come. Uh, not a prediction that I'm happy to have been right <laughs> in making, but uh, I did make that decision to step away from large events and focus on um, more commercial work and working one-on-one -on -one with business owners and situations that could be a little bit more controlled and comfortable for me. Hmm. Jenny, how about wedding photography for you? Anything there? Um, in the last season, I completely agree with what she was saying. Uh, it's changed so much. Um, so I do branding photography as well as uh, wedding and personal photography. And in the wedding side of things, it was quiet, 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 um, especially until uh, the restrictions in Ontario changed in the beginning of July. And then from July to November, it's actually been the busiest season we've had in the last three years. Um, and I know a lot of other wedding photographers who worked this season um, also felt the same. It was last minute bookings. It was very hectic. Um, and it's just it's supposed to be like the biggest boom that's also happened in a very finite amount of time as a result of all the weddings that were pushed back in 2020, all the last minute weddings that people decided to do, all the weddings people had really soon to their engagement because they just wanted to make it happen. Uh, so yeah, massively different. Jenny, uh, this may sound like a dumb question, but, but when you're doing a wedding during COVID, mm -hmm. are you masked up when you're taking your pictures? Um, absolutely, because there are large groups. Um, they are, you know, we're, we're doing quite a number. So myself and uh, my partner, who's also my second shooter, um, will both be double masked and have our precautions in place. Is there a difference? Do you notice a difference in your relationship with the camera when there's a piece of cloth between you and it? I actually think I've gotten really used to it. At first, it was really hard, um, but I think I've gotten used to it. It just gets a little suffocating sometimes. <laughs> Marissa, how about you? Any different approach to the way you take pictures now versus two years ago? Yes, I mean, absolutely. I, I used to be shooting, um, you know, landscapes and, um, you know, events that I would attend and things like that. Uh, now, the majority of the photos that I take are just screen caps of, say, FaceTimes and um, calls that I do with family here and abroad. Um, so I'm taking more screen captures than, than actual photos uh, because I realize that I prefer photos where I'm actually interacting with somebody else. Um, you know, whereas uh, now in the pandemic, I spend a lot of time on my own, working from home. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just a lot of, just a lot of screen captures now as opposed to actual photos. And, uh, let me follow up on those numbers that we presented at the top, which is to say, we've got a lot more people right now reminiscing over older photos as opposed to taking newer photos. Is that your experience as well? Yes, absolutely. I find that looking back at old photos can actually really boost my mood in this pandemic, you know, looking back. Um, at moments where, you know, we were we were having a great time and we we could have never anticipated that things would turn out this way. Um, and so I find that looking back at those photos uh, is a real boost in my mood. Um, you know, it, it's nice to remember times where where you could have fun without um, without thinking about, you know, without having this this pandemic kind of as the undercurrent. Um, so I do enjoy looking back at old photos. Jenny, how about you? More time with old pictures these days? Definitely. Um, it's really funny. So right before the pandemic, we were traveling quite a lot for our clients. We went to California. We were in Maui. Um, and I think between a partner and I, we like really romanticized those trips now because it was like the last thing and like the place that we went to before the pandemic. Um, we also look massively different. Like, just seasons have changed, the way COVID has affected us. Um, and it's really funny. We have a photo of myself and my partner six months into the pandemic. Um, and not going to lie, like I look back at that photo actually to look at how rough like we looked the six months <laughs> into the pandemic. Um, you know, my partner's hair was like thinning a little, like I was just not, not doing so great. Um, but I'm glad at least I have that one moment as a reflection of, you know, something happened, something big happened there in that photo. And now we can start to see like what it looks like on 
this side of still being in a pandemic, uh, but almost, what, two, two, three years later? Right. Well, speaking of what it looks like, we would like to show folks what some of Dallas's work looks like. And uh, Dallas, I'm going to, there we go. Thank you, Sheldon. I'm going to ask Sheldon if he would just sort of scroll through this, I gather you call it the safekeeping series, which you shot during the pandemic. And maybe you could tell us where the inspiration for this came from and what you wanted to do with it. Absolutely. Uh, this series came during my postpartum period when I was feeling really down and having a tough time being at home with my daughter and not being able to introduce her to the world as, as we had discussed. And uh, I knew, I know that I was far from the only mother feeling this sense of isolation. So I thought it would be fun to do a project celebrating the emotional resilience of mothers during the pandemic and all the emotional labor they were doing. Women were so um, devastatingly affected by the pandemic, having to leave the workforce in droves um, and just take over all caregiving responsibilities. And I wanted to celebrate them and also give them something beautiful from this moment where they couldn't be with family, couldn't have support, had to carry a burden and shield their children from it. Um, so I actually used windows and had the, the mothers and their children be behind the windows um, as a memory of this time of social distancing and, and really sheltering in place. Like this was earlier on in the pandemic when we were not uh, getting out much. <laughs> See, now th that's a, I mean, I don't, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. That's a fabulous picture there. I, I, I mean, I love everything about that picture. And I just wonder Thank when you. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that so much. This family not was at all. absolutely I mean, amazing. Those young girls how, were so yeah, joyful. Look, look how fabulous they look. And you've got the reflection of the trees in there too. It's just a, it's a, it's a great shot. You call it the safekeeping series. Where did that name come from? Well, I thought about the name forever, <laughs> and I originally was going to call it Women Through Windows, but I wanted it to be more than just a name and the setting. I wanted it to really symbolize what mothers were giving as a gift to their children, um, because we all did make a lot of personal sacrifices. Everybody has, well, most people, um, and we've all made changes to our lives that we have, would have never wanted to make. So the mothers were really sheltering in place, keeping their children safe and doing everything they could. Um, so it was really a tribute to them, the name. Do you think of yourself in some respects more as an historian as opposed to a photographer? I mean, you really are capturing a particular moment in history, which, I mean, God willing, we haven't experienced for a hundred years and hopefully won't experience for another hundred years, if ever. Well, I think all photographers by nature are historians, but we don't necessarily realize it until a certain amount of time has passed. For me, and I'm sure Jenny has had this experience as well as a wedding photographer, we often um, unwillingly become historians when people that we photograph from weddings pass away. And I've had a lot of past clients reach out to me and say, this person's service is approaching and you took the best picture of them that we ever had. Like, could you send us a large file so we could print it for the funeral? That's happened to me, sadly, too many times. Um, but this, to me, was the first time where I really thought I want to create something that can document the feeling of being in this time as a mother and really stand for what we were all kind of doing and feeling at the time. Cool. Let's share some more numbers here. Sheldon, I'm going to ask you to bring up these Chapter 3 numbers here. This is the change in the kinds of content that have been created during the course of this pandemic. And this first number is not going to surprise anybody. There's apparently been an 80% decrease in travel photos. Well, duh, right? There's been a 112% increase in pet photos. That's also probably not very surprising. And 68% increase in food photos. Yes, of course, when we can't show the wonderful places we've been traveling to, we'll just show people what's on our plates. Uh, Marissa, start us off on this. The lack of traveling, the lack of socializing, does that, I suppose, uh, prompt you to try to capture the smaller moments in life? Yes, absolutely. I think the subject matter of my photos have changed so much. Um, I'm definitely taking pictures, you know, more around my apartment, more selfies, um, things like that. The, the subject matter has certainly changed. 
Um, and you know, what I choose to put out there on social media has changed as well. Uh, it's really made me contend with the, with the fact that, you know, in general on social media, we, we tend to post our most exciting, our most interesting experiences. Um, you know, and I've had to kind of, uh, contend with that and really question, you know, what I post on social media, why I put it there. Um, you know, and so, uh, picture taking pictures around the apartment, you know, might, might not have been social media worthy prior to the pandemic, but, uh, now that now that my my standards you know for a great experience and something interesting memorable have changed um you know what i put out there and what i post has changed as well give me a little example of that marissa in in the past you might have put some fantastic picture from some glorious location up there nowadays it's more what so i mean i might have posted a picture of of you know me at a restaurant with a friend uh you know here in montreal something, something exciting, something fun. But now I might post, you know, picture of me reading in the apartment, you know, doing, doing things that prior to the pandemic might have seemed kind of mundane. But um, now that this is our everyday, this is our daily life, you know, it's, it's worth documenting and, and it's worth putting out there. Jenny, how about you? Do you find yourself taking more pictures of more mundane things these days? I do. And I think the, the less travel photos also really uh, speak out to me um, because I have like this full bank of travel photos. Um, I'm so sorry, my mic keeps turning off. Um, but I think it's just hard to share as many travel photos too because I think we're really conscious of what's happening in online spaces. Um, and as a result, like when people feel like the heaviness about not being able to travel, I think it's also hard to share those kind of images. We're going to have to hire you a new lighting director, Jenny. The, the guy I'm who's so doing it right now just needs to be fired. <laughs> I'm, I'm firing that person. It's all good. Well, that does raise the question about how, how do you manage to take a great picture when the lights are flickering on and off all the time? Does that ever happen to you during a shoot? It doesn't happen during the shoots, but it also really speaks out to like, we've had to take some photos in interesting places as a result of the lockdowns, like not being able to have access to certain studios, things changing last minute. Um, so at least definitely speaks to the resilience of making the best out of any space. Right on. Dallas, what do you find yourself taking pictures of now that before the pandemic, it wouldn't have occurred to you to take the picture because you thought, oh, God, that's too boring or too, mon too mundane or just not important enough to capture. Well, I would say two things, Steve. Uh, on a micro level at my home, um, I've been getting more interested in um, home decorating and decor. So I've been styling different objects and books. I guess you can see all my knickknacks behind me here. Um, and just kind of puttering around in my house a little bit more and, and taking photos of that. And then on a, a macro level, uh, we've been traveling more, but within our own backyard. Um, I'm, I'm an Ontario native, so I'm, I'm relatively new to Alberta. So discovering the outdoors has been fabulous, especially as I'm more of an indoor cat myself. Um, the pandemic has forced me to become outdoorsy and bring my camera with me. So going to the Rocky Mountains and our favorite is Canmore. Uh, we also love Banff and uh, of course Jasper. So really going there with my family and exploring like the beautiful landscapes that Canada has to offer. Extraordinary, isn't it? It really, I remember the first time I saw the Rocky Mountains, I could not believe how just absolutely glorious they were. But I'm wondering as an Ontario kid, what do you think of minus 25 in Alberta? It's a dry cold, Steve. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't soak your bones like the Ontario winters. Or I lived in Montreal for quite a while too. And oh, Marissa, I feel for you right now. It's just that bone chilling cold. So I'm fine with it here. It can be minus 40 as long as it doesn't chill me to the bone. I'm good with it. Can you now I should ask you this. Can you actually take pictures outdoors in in like minus 25, minus 30? Can your fingers operate on those conditions? Uh, fingers questionable, but uh, battery power <laughs> is an issue. Um, you better make sure you pack like four times the amount of batteries because the cold just drains their life force very quickly. Marissa, what do you, I mean, Montreal is a miserably cold place too sometimes during the wintertime. What's your outdoor shooting experience like? 
Uh, you're absolutely right that it can be miserably cold. Um, but, you know, Montreal has a lot of interesting outdoor art installations. So, you know, occasionally I'll take pictures of those. You take pictures of the facades of buildings and things like that. Um, so a lot of there's a lot of outdoor photography happening. But luckily, Montreal is a place where, um, you know, there is a lot. There is a lot to shoot outside. So uh, that's a blessing. Very true. Montreal is a beautiful city to look at. Jenny, in our last minute here, just talk to us, if you would, about how photographs, be they exotic or very mundane, can actually console people significantly during tough times like we're going through right now. Well, I think speaking earlier to the fact that we are like photographers and photographs are like a documentation of what's happening in your everyday life. Um, and I think they really help tell that story of like what's going on, what's changing, how we've changed, what we're experiencing. Um, and I think just to be able to have some form of record of it, even if it's just the photos mm -hmm. of, you know, the screenshots from big times or how you're able to connect with family, um, whatever it looks like for you right now, I think having access to that and having the ability to do that it's, it's still a keepsake, even if they look really different, even if there's more pet photos, even if the lighting's wonky, um, you know, there's still keepsakes that people get to have, um, you know, to be able to share because we're literally living history right now. Um, I have eight nieces and nephews and uh, they're going through it. And I know like in 10 years, we're going to talk about, remember when this happened? And um, there's one that was born in the middle of the pandemic as well. And these images that we have right now is going to be how we are able to tell that story down the line to the people who uh, know this time as a piece of history. Well, I want to thank the three of you for joining us on TVO tonight and beyond that for being such wonderfully talented documentarians of the times in which we live. So thank you in Edmonton, Alberta, to Dallas Curo in Vaughan, Ontario, to photographer Jenny J, and in Montreal, Quebec, to Marissa Colton. You all stay safe out there, and thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me thanks, on, Steve. Steve. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.